everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Vlog Canada. My name is Jawad and I'm from Calgary, Alberta. In today's video, I will be discussing about the Canadian Citizenship Oath Ceremony experience. So last year, I attended the virtual Oath Ceremony event. That was sometime in May 2023. It was all online. I didn't have to travel. It saved me a lot of time. Now, this is actually a final step before one becomes a Canadian citizen. As soon as you take the oath, effectively from that day, you become Canadian citizen. Now, generally, the oaths are held online, which is a good thing as it saves you a lot of time, like I mentioned earlier. There are a few things that you need to do to ensure that you meet the requirements of the oath ceremony before attending it. So based on my own personal experience, I will, I'm going to share a few things and a few um, tips as well, just to make sure that you are fully prepared for the oath ceremony before you actually attend it to ensure the smooth processing of your Canadian citizenship application. And the other thing I wanted to clarify that I'm not a regi IRCC registered consultant. This video is based on my own personal experience. So make sure you watch this video from the start till the end and do like and subscribe to my channel. Before I give you more information about the Canadian Citizenship Oath Ceremony, I have made some other videos as well that maybe that might be helpful as well. So if you're in the process of applying for Canadian Citizenship, do check out my other videos as well. Links are in the description. And if you're also preparing for Canadian Citizenship Test Raid, um, I made another helpful video. Do check it out as well. So make sure you do check out these videos as well and do share it with your friends and family member. Now, let me share my screen here and so that I can go through other things as well with you. All right, guys, as you can see on my screen, this is the official website of Government of Canada, and these are the instructions about how you can prepare for the citizenship ceremony, right? And uh, IRCC will invite most applicants to a video oath ceremony, virtual citizenship ceremony, and this is how I um, this is how I completed my oath ceremony as well. And uh, for approved applications to become a Canadian citizen, like they have mentioned clearly, most most probably they will be inviting you to a video oath ceremony, virtual citizenship ceremony. Okay, so just make sure when you do receive the invitation you will see the instructions provided follow the instructions accordingly okay now who has to take the oath adults and children age 14 or over must go to the citizenship ceremony and take the oath so anyone who is 14 or over they must take the oath right that's because one of the requirement for it now <clears throat> once you do get the invitation usually they'll send you the invitation one or two weeks prior in my case, it was like a month prior, so you'll be notified, right? Now, how you can check the status, so like you probably have the access to the citizenship tracker, so just keep checking citizenship tracker for more updates, right? As soon as these three checks are completed, prohibition, language, skills, physical presence, you will see that the next step will be citizenship oath, right? And it will be changed to in progress, from not started to in progress, right? So just keep an eye on that. And once you, once basically they invite you for the citizenship ceremony, you will be receiving like a notice like this. Okay. So just keep an eye on your email as well. And uh, once you do receive the email notification, follow the instruction accordingly. Now, when they do send you the invitation, make sure it's not going to spam or jump folder. The email will be ending with at the rate cic.gc.ca to your email safe sender list, right? And uh, in case if you have not provided any email or if they don't have your email address on file, they may call you from an unknown caller ID or they might call you from a number outside of Canada. So just keep an eye accordingly, okay? And follow the, follow the instructions accordingly as well, okay? Now, basically at the day when you are ready to take your oath, right? Make sure you do follow the time frame as well. So whatever the time is mentioned in your oath invitation letter, make sure you do follow that as well, okay? Now let's talk about what to bring. You would basically be taking ceremony notice and this is something you'll be getting, right? A signed copy of the permission release and concern form included with the notice, permanent residence card. So this is very important to understand at the time, at the day when, when you, when you will be, and you'll be having your oath ceremony, someone will actually be asking you to show your permanent residency card because they'll be asking you to cut that card into a few pieces, right? And you would also be needing a two piece of personal identification. One piece of ID must have your photograph and signature, for example, driving license, health card or permanent residence card. If you have a foreign ID, must be government issued. Canadian ones do not need to be government issued. If they're not English and French, you must provide a translation with the affidavit from the translator. All your passport and travel documents, current expired, they're listed on the application form. 
optional. So this is kind of an optional thing, a holy book of your choice if you want to use to serve the oath of citizenship. If you do want to bring that holy book, go ahead and take it. If you don't, you don't have to, okay? Now, what's going to happen at the day of the ceremony? Basically, as soon as the session is started, right? As soon as the session is started, What's going to happen, someone from the RCC will basically be validating your IDs. They will be looking at your IDs and all that. And they'll also be asking you to cut your PR card into a few pieces, right? Now, once that's all done, then you'll basically be transferred to the lobby. And if, I mean, I'm just talking about the virtual online session, right? So as soon as you're transferred into the lobby, then you'll basically be waiting for the oath ceremony to be started. And as soon as the oath ceremony started, they'll be asking you to read or recite this oath, right? So make sure you go through the oath as well, so that you're fully in at the day when you, you know, when you actually have the oath ceremony, right? <clears throat> so yeah, these are the main steps actually. So just making sure if you're going for the online one, right? If you're if you're having an online session, right? Make sure you do have a stable internet connection. Your, you know, your devices are fully charged. You have all the documents you need and documents like we earlier mentioned. You would basically be needing your ceremony oath letter and uh, basically you will basically be signing the. So this is actually the oath letter, right? And the, the oath of affirmation of citizenship. So this is what you need to sign in the end, right? So as soon as your oath is completed, if you're having a virtual session, make sure you do sign it. You can print it, you can do electronic signature, and then you can revert it back to the um, same, email, same email address from where you have received the citizenship oath notification, right? Like the, the invitation letter. So make sure you do send it back to the same email address. So once that's submitted, then you should be able to get your citizenship certificate either online or by paper mail. Depends, right? What you opted for. So if you submit it, if you ask for an electronic certificate, you should be able to access it in a few days as soon as you submitted that um, oath sign letter. And then um, if you opted for paper mail, you can expect to receive that in the next few weeks, right? It's, it's going to take some time, okay? So these are the main instructions I can recall. So making sure you have all the IDs, you have the PR card, and you have the season in, with you, right? Because you'll have to cut that into a few pieces. And then you would also be needing um two pieces of id like we mentioned you and you also need to sign the old letter and then accordingly you can go and submit all that information right um also keeping in mind if you're concerned about the processing time frame i didn't mean make a media about the urgent processing of citizenship application uh, the link is in the description if you do want to apply for urgent processing you can follow the steps and if you meet the criteria go and apply for it generally speaking the citizenship currently taking around six to eight months but if you look at the official website they're they're saying the processing time is 15 months okay so just you know basically um as as soon as your citizenship test is done the the oath invitation generally taking around two to three months right um, so Jay, basically just keep an eye on your application portal tracker. Also, this is actually a helpful resource you can use. This is actually Canada Visa Cohen Immigration Law. It's, it's actually a forum where you can see all the other applicants as well. They, you know, basically they're sharing their live timelines, um, like when they've applied, what's the status and all that. So accordingly, that can give you some kind of idea how the IOCC is moving along with the process. Thank you very much for watching once again, guys. Hope you like this video. Do like and subscribe to my channel. Do share it with your friends and family members as well. And as soon as you get your Canadian citizenship certificate, go ahead and apply for the password as well. I'm going to add another link in the description. I've made a video about how to apply for an adult Canadian passport as well, what documents are required and how you can fill out the application to do, do check out that video as well. Well, thank, thank you once again. Take care of yourself. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.